What is the socialist alternative for our country today? Let's find out. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. And we are reporting from Washington State, the state of eternal mandates and uh, endless lockdowns by Governor Inslee. Just to be clear, as a trigger warning, nothing I say has been approved by Inslee's Ministry of COVID Compliance, although I don't expect COVID to be a dominant subject for this video. But what I will be talking about is uh, COVID's close cousin, the socialist alternative to liberty and freedom that we have in our country today. With Kashama Sawant's recent very narrow uh, victory that she was able to eke out over the recall effort in Seattle, uh, the discussion of socialism and some kind of socialist approach to governance is still continuing in our state and really around the country today as we see socialist experiments uh, create amazing utopias like they are with the the homeless encampments and disaster of rap rapidly escalating murder rates in, in Portland or in California or in other parts of our country. But there is a socialist alternative, and I think it's worth looking at. Obviously, this is their logo. This is the uh, image that they have and they want to portray. Uh, they've taken away the fists and kind of uh, put a dove there. It's just a short-term uh, bait and switch for you to believe that there's some kind of friendliness to the socialism that we're experiencing today. But the reality is that socialism has uh, is always promoting itself and pushing itself as the ascendant in Seattle uh, dominant political theory. Uh, this is what they say right now, and they are pushing it as hard hard as they possibly can. But of course, the fists always do come out. That dove kind of vanishes over time. And uh, with uh, Kashama Sawant as being kind of their local poster child, uh, the funny thing is she's hardly the only socialist in Seattle, and she isn't certainly the only socialist on the city of uh, Seattle City Council. But uh, nevertheless, she gets a lot of the attention, and uh, it's very exciting if you're a socialist in Seattle to know that somehow she was able to barely eke out by just the narrowest of margins the recall effort that just occurred against her. But of course, there's a huge debate within the Democratic Party, and that's true in Washington state as well as elsewhere around the country, as to whether they're going to let the socialist wing dominate who they are, or whether they're going to come back to some kind of more moderate approach to their socialist tendencies. It's hard to know which one it's going to be. Obviously, the DNC insiders decided to sabotage Bernie Sanders' effort when he tried to run for office, and obviously committed a lot of insider games and fraud to make sure he didn't get in. But uh, that that being said, it does appear that that side of the Democratic Party, that lefty, uh, woke uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, the die agenda, that that is really pushing and driving the Democrat Party today. And there's been fewer and fewer of them in that party who actually identify it differently. Now, it wasn't always that way. The Socialist Party has been in America for a long, long time. Uh, this is a campaign uh, flyer from 1904, and they had ran presidential candidates under the Socialist banner uh, proudly. In fact, that era would have been the time that my, according to my grandfather, that my great-great-grandmother, who was a definitely a political activist in Seattle, she would have been celebrating this crew and probably voted for him at the time. Seattle, of course, has had a history of socialism uh, over the years, periodically. So Kashama Sawant's hardly the newest one. She may be the newest one on the block getting attention, but she's not the only one and not the first. Uh, but socialism has been around for a long, long time. And uh, this is the 1912 uh, presidential uh, ballot. Uh, here's some socialists, good socialists running for office. And uh, it was a big part of the political scene uh, all around the country for a long time. And when you look at Seattle specifically, there was a socialist paper printed in Seattle for for 10 years called the Socialists appropriately. And uh, they even had a platform of the Socialist Party of Washington, which they published in 1909. And there was nothing concealed or hidden about it. They were very open about it, just like the Socialist Alternative in Seattle is today. They're very happy to talk about um, their beliefs. Although I do believe back in this era, they were a little more honest about what they were. Today, socialism needs to be careful and kind of uh, hide a little bit of the truth about what's happened when people try to implement socialism socialism around the country. Of course, there are a lot of great socialism quotes. You know, if you make it, they will take it. Uh, it's kind of one of the theories that socialism operates on, giving free stuff to some people and taking it away from others. That's a great inspiration to encourage you to work hard so you can give away free stuff. 
Uh, and of course, Margaret Thatcher's famous quote about the problem of socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. And there's a lot of people who are willing to sign up for no work and free stuff, whereas it's a little bit hard to find people to sit, uh, who are willing to sign up to work hard and keep half. Or if you live in some states in this country, maybe keep a third or a fourth. And who knows? Socialism is so awesome, it's just inevitable that it's going to create opportunities like that. But what happens is that today, in the modern educational environment we have in America, uh, since most professors don't have the ability to function too well outside of the ivory uh, school and the environment that they have going to college, this is the attitude that dominantly comes out of most of the modern secondary education systems in America today. You don't have to be an evergreen college student or to even go to Western. Um, this is just going to be the dominant attitude you come out because after all, socialism, I'm sure, will work this time, even though it's failed every other time it's been tried because my college professor told me so. Now, that, unfortunately, is something that, that's a headwind that we always have to deal with on the freedom and liberty side of the equation where we're trying to encourage people to be uh, independent and liberty-oriented and freedom-focused uh, when you just believe that socialism is going to solve all your problems as the guaranteed utopia. That's always going to be a challenge. Of course, socialism is so awesome, the best thing you can do is talk to somebody who's tried to escape from it. Uh, people are willing to build boats from trash to escape from it in Cuba. And of course, they're willing to do the same thing coming out of Venezuela or earlier eras of many people, especially I know in Washington state, we've had a lot of people that came from the Ukraine or from Eastern Europe or from Russia who were very happy to escape socialism and didn't, uh, they didn't necessarily have to climb 15 foot high walls because the Berlin Wall did eventually fall down, um, but it was taken down. It didn't, it didn't come down easily. And many people before that were willing to escape. I remember I had a friend, of, uh, there was a friend of mine in one of my classes in high school, Thomas Jefferson High High school and her family had escaped from Eastern Europe. Not fans of socialism. They didn't like it. And that's what I find with most people who have come to our country today from Vietnam or other countries. They're not happy about socialism and they don't want it coming back and they don't want it coming here. And they're not fans of Kashama Sawant or any of this other uh, modern socialist alternative. But let's talk about some of the things for which there is a socialist alternative. We'll start out with property rights because that's an area that I've spent a lot of time as an activist uh, pushing back against eminent domain, against the abuse of civil asset forfeiture, against the abuse of government coming down and creating their utopian planning schemes like the Growth Management Act and others that actually greatly increase and accelerate the cost of housing and essentially prevent lower income people from getting any housing at all. And pushing back on these because these are encroachments on property rights has been a priority for me because liberty and freedom begins with property rights. Many of the amendments in our federal constitution and state constitution are oriented around protecting your property rights. And uh, when government can just come and take that away from you or destroy that or distribute it to others, then we really do start to have a problem when it comes to freedom and liberty. And this is why Thomas Sowell has famously said that both free speech rights and property rights belong legally to individuals. But the real function, of course, is social because they actually benefit the vast number of people who don't necessarily appear to exercise those rights on a regular basis. Now, that is a really important thing to point out because socialism has an alternative. And if you ever get the Communist Manifesto, and I actually encourage everybody to have one. I have a copy at home. I think it's important. Uh, Marx was actually willing to be very open about uh, what the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto were. The first plank was to abolish property rights. Very clearly, there was no ambiguous pretense or wordsmithing that you might see today in socialist li literature. They were just very clear. This is the origin. The only way that socialism can, can occur is that you have to abolish property rights. And many of those 10 planks involve taking away property rights from people. And this is why people like Kashama Swant are so comfortable with this. And of course, it's also common at study groups like uh, this crew from Ever uh, Evergreen State College. This is what they talk about all the time, and their professors are oftentimes teaching them that taking somebody's private property and eliminating private property rights, of course, is an important part of the socialist agenda. And this is why when you have big, even billionaire financiers like George Soros, they're always pushing groups and organizations that strive for that same outcome, that same goal. They definitely have an alternative. And uh, this is why you even see at the World Economic Forum a super wealthy guy like Klaus Schwab say, hey, in the future, um, you're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy about it. What's funny about this is he doesn't say that he's going to own nothing. He doesn't say that he will own nothing and be happy about it. He says that you will. Because that's inevitably what socialism brings as the alternative. In socialism, the elites live one way. The rest of us are all peasants and uh, they're happy to take away our property rights and ensure that we own nothing. 
And uh, even though when they've done surveys, they've shown that most people do want to have something that they can call their own, their home, an apartment, a uh, piece of property maybe. That's really a goal for the majority of Americans for really generations. These surveys have shown that's pretty consistent. However, that is not the goal that socialism has for you. The socialist alternative is going to be something closer to this. Uh, maybe you can steal that shopping cart and throw your portable tent on the top of it and sleep there. This is why they spend an inordinate amount of their time defending that type of, of uh, living and not much trying to encourage people to have the ability to live in their own home or have their own property. They don't care about that. The socialist alternative is to make sure you don't have any other property and that you love it. Maybe you get free stuff handed out from them and you can be dependent on whatever their goodwill would give you because, of course, the other part of what Thomas Sowell mentioned here is free speech. There is nothing more threatening to socialism than free speech because they want to make sure that you have the right to say only what they approve and not something that they disagree with. So they usually won't openly come out and say that they don't uh, support free speech. Some of them now will. They'll, they'll be a little bit more honest, but they're happy to silence you. That's why Antifa comes out and beats up anybody that disagrees with them. This is why the socialist alternative tries to shut down and destroy anybody who disagrees with them. And this is why Facebook and Twitter and all the big tech media guys are all on board with it because they're part of the woke die agenda too. Uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, right? Die is what it stands for. They're in the same program, and they definitely want to censor anything that you have out there. So the alternative, socialist alternative free speech, is that you can only say or think what they want you to say and think. And of course, that's not really a great alternative. So when I look around and I talk to people and I talk to recent immigrants or I talk to people that are new Americans and haven't been here that long or people sometimes that have been here a long time and they just woke up themselves as to what was going on around them, they don't strike me as being super enthusiastic for socialism, at least not the real socialist alternative that's being presented to us and demonstrated to us in the big cities today. When you talk to them about freedom and liberty, however, there's a lot more enthusiasm and a lot more interest in going down that road. And I think that the only reason that the freedom and liberty message hasn't been better received or presented is really one that there's a lot of people that are against freedom and liberty. It's not just the tech giants that are opposed to it. It's also the political establishment, the bureaucracy, and, of course, the media, the traditional media, which generally doesn't promote a freedom and liberty message. And it's important because I think when people get a chance to experience freedom and liberty, that's a scary thing for socialists because when they experience that, they don't like the socialist alternative. And so it's important to recognize there's certainly a socialist alternative out there, but it's not the one I think that most people want. And a lot of this I'm reminded of because my wife and I in 2004 were uh, backpacking in Eastern Europe and we were in Estonia and specifically we went to a city called Viljandi in Estonia. And uh, it's kind of in the southern part of the country. And while we were there uh, backpacking around, uh, we just, we'd gotten married a little while before then and we were spending some time in Eastern Europe backpacking, going to youth hostels, you know, staying pretty cheap as we were going along. I wanted to go visit this local museum that they had. And I noticed in Eastern Europe at the time, this would have been 2004, so the, the, it's only about 15 years since Eastern Europe had really changed dramatically after the wall fell, and so there, there's a new generation of people growing up there. But they had museums in a lot of these towns, even the little town like Viljandi, they had this museum. And it was really, to describe it, it was more like a museum to socialism, because when you went in there, they had all of these little displays that were set up uh, showing these uh, utopian presentations that the communists, the socialists had had uh, when, the, when they finally were freed as a country and these people had saved them and they wanted to show what, they were being, what was being shoved down their throats. And there was a girl working there who was about 14, 16 years old. She looked like she was in that, that age range, a teenager. And she was very excited to practice her English out with us. And so she came up to us and wanted to show us each of these displays. And I just remember the demeanor that she had in it, practicing her English, but also just mocking the silliness of the utopian socialist vision, which was clearly not what, what reality was at all, and laughing about how absurd and ridiculous it was that previous generations in Estonia and in Russia and other countries there actually believed some of these schemes and plans could even work and how irrational they were. And it was just very funny and kind of interesting to see how she pitched that and presented that to us while we were there. I've, I've just never forgotten it. And if I was to look at socialism today, and I really imagine where it's going down the road, I believe that freedom and liberty can win. 
But it becomes an effort that has to be fought and engaged in. We can't just abandon this fight and just presume that most people are going to be smart enough to realize it because there's a lot of attraction and promotion to Karl Marx's ideas and the promotion that they give to socialism and utopian schemes that have failed every time they've been tried, no matter where they are in the world, whether that's in California today or whether that's the Democrat Party trying to push it through various platforms that they're changing on their agenda. Uh, socialism is something that has to be pushed back and exposed. That's the only way that you can prevail. And ultimately, it'd be my goal that as socialism fails this time around as well, that future generations look back just like that girl in Estonia and laugh at the absurdity and the ridiculousness of some of these kinds of schemes that were being pushed on the rest of us because the socialist alternative certainly exists. It's just not one that I think most of us actually want to live in. So with that, if you want to learn more, uh, please feel free to go to We The Governed. I encourage you to go down and look in the video description below. If you want to subscribe to our free uh, email from our website, or if you'd like to support our effort in uh, communicating uh, this information and others moving forward. And remember, I always encourage activism and uh, political engagement by anybody. You have to get out there and show up because the future belongs to those who show up.